Hello, my name is Keshwani. That's K E S H W A N I, Keshwani. We are here because we want to prepare for the GRE. We have been solving GRE math questions out of this book here, the official guide to the GRE, the revised general test. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You're going to need it. The problem that we are about to solve is the one that you will find on page number 243. Today is our lesson number 135. Let's take a look at it. On page 243, we have a parabola. We have a parabola and of course we know what the equation of parabola looks like because we have dealt with it before. The equation of parabola is y equals x squared. We have done with this before, but for those of you who have not uh, watched these videos still, make sure you go back and watch day 123 and day 124. That's when we learn a little bit about parabola. What does the what does the graph look like of a typical parabola, a standard parabola, sitting at an origin? Very simple, very straightforward. like this when x is 0 when x is 0 when x is 0 y is 0 when x is positive or negative 1 y is going to be positive 1 or negative 1 squared which is simply 1 when x is positive 1 or negative positive 2 or negative 2 y is going to be square of positive 2 or negative 2 which is 4 when x is positive 3 or negative 3, y is going to be positive 3 or negative 3 squared, which is 9. So here we have our 0, 0, and when x is 1, y is 1, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3. Let's call this 5, and let's call this 10. When x is 1, y is 1, so it's going to be somewhere here. When x is 2, y is 4, it's going to be somewhere up here. As I explained to you before in the earlier videos, the scales on the x-axis and the y-axis do not have to be the same. The scale has to be consistent along a given axis. It has to be consistent along a given axis, but they don't, have, they don't need to be the same scales for x-axis and y-axis. Here, in the x-axis, my 1 is only this much. My, my 5 is going to be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. The 5 is going to be all the way from here here, which of course is a lot more than the 5 that I'm showing here. As you can see, it's a different scale. The scale does not need to be the same on the given, on the two axes. So, when x is 2, y is 4. When x is 3, y is 9. Somewhere here. That's it. That's your graph. And the reason why scales do not need to be the same is because imagine instead of x squared had it been x cubed. By the time you get to 4, you're reaching 4 cubed, which is 64. You're going to graph, it's going to go hit the ceiling if you make the scale the same on x-axis and y-axis. So, here's your graph. Voila. And that's your f of x. Now, question is, now the question is, What's going to happen if we were to take this graph, if we were to take this equation, and divide it by 4? Question now is, what will happen if we were to take this function, f, and divide it by 4 divided by 4 if you were to divide it by 4 let's call it let's give this new function a new name obviously let's call it g so g of x is going to be the previous thing that is here we have x squared divided by 4 so g of x equals f of x divided by 4 we're taking the old function and dividing it by 4 
which simply means exactly what it says. It means that the value of the y now is what going to be one quarter of the values before for each given value of x. Here, the values of y are going to be are going to be one quarter of the values of y before for any given value of x. So before when x was 0, y was 0. Now when x is 0, y is going to be 1 quarter of 0. 1 quarter of 0 is still 0. So it starts out here. As you can see, if we put a 0 here, 0, zero squared is 0, 0 divided by 4 is 0. Now when you put 1 here, and when you put 1 here, 1 squared is 1, 1 divided by 4 is going to be 1 quarter. So when x is 1, y is going to be 1 quarter. It's going to be over here somewhere, very low, very low, right here from there. When x is 2, when x is 2, when x is 2, it's going to be 2 squared over 4. 2 squared is 4, 4 divided by 4 is 1. So it's going to be right here. When x is 3, the g of 3, when x is 3, it's going to be 3 squared over 4, which is 9 over 4, which is 2 and 1 quarter. 2 and 1 quarter. It's going to be somewhere here. That's your graph. Let's join it. Oh my god, this guy is very fat. He's gotten fatter. This new graph, the red one, so this blue one was f of x, the new one is what we're calling the g of x. The g, letter g, is the name of the function, and it is read as g of x, which simply means we have a function a relationship, we are calling it, we are giving this relationship the name g and it's related somehow with the y x, with the variable y, with the, with the variable which we are calling x, which obviously typically we have x and y. And if you are still not very, if you are still not very strong and very confident about this concept of functions, then that is not a good news. I spend a lot of time on the notion of functions on the notion of functions. If you're shaky on it, if you're shaky on it, I shouldn't have written it there because I just realized I'm going to, I'm going to leave the room over there. If you're shaking on it, if you're shaky on it, watch day number 106 and 107. Just type in revised GRE math, day 106, 107. Those are the days when we first learn, talked about this notion of function and why some of them are called f of x and why some of them are called g of x and why some of them are called monkey of x or hippo of x. Let's continue. I want to do something else with it. What's going to happen? What's going to happen? What will happen if we were to take a new function? Fn is, a, is an abbreviation for function. This is how we write function. Because mathematicians are lazy, they just put down f and n, function. What will happen if we were to take our new function, g of x, and multiply it by negative 1. Let's talk about that, shall we? So 
So since it's a new function, we have to give it a new name, obviously. We use up the letter f. This is, this is a function we call f. This is a function we call g. Let's call the new one h. So the h of x that I'm talking about is simply negative 1 times g of x. It's the same as negative 1 times x squared over 4. Was it, was it x squared over 4? Or was it 2? Well, how much was it stretched? By the factor of 4. It was fattened by the factor of 4. So negative 1 times x squared over 4, which is the same as negative x squared over 4. But negative x squared over 4 tells us that here, here, all the values, all the values of y will remain same as before for the given values of x is except how do you spell except e x p p except they will be negative. The values of y are going to be same as before except they're going to be negative. Whatever the values of y were for a given value of x is the exact same value except it's negative because it's got a negative in front of it. That's what it is. So how is the new graph going to look like? Well, the new graph is going to look like exactly the same as before except it's going to be inverted. It's just going to be inverted. We're going to pick it up and we're going to flip it. That's what it is. We're going to flip it. See, this is what I mean by, I didn't mean to write it here. So we're going to take our red graph and we're going to flip it. That's all. That's all it is. And that is our h of x. h of x equals negative 1 times g of x. And g of x equals and g of x equals f of x over 4. That's it. The very last thing that I want to cover, I want to talk about before I close the video is the terminology. I, I kept referring to this thing when you take this function, this hyperbola, x squared and you divide it by a given number, it becomes fatter. The book does not obviously use this terminology. They do not go around talking about graphs getting fatter or skinnier. They use a different terminology. They use a more more geeky way of putting it. They more more academic way of putting it. We need to learn that language. So that's what I want to talk about next. I need the room, so I'm going to have to erase it, all of it. So what will happen if we were to take our new function g of x and multiply by negative 1? Well, we get a new function, which is going to be just an inverted, inverted mirror of the old one. The red line and the green line, they are the same graph, it's just inverted, it's flipped. Which is exactly, which is exactly what you see there on that page there. y equals negative x squared over 4, negative x squared over 4, now we know where it's coming from. They don't talk about parabola getting fatter. They don't say which which of the following equation will make our parabola fat. No, 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 no. The term that they use is stretched vertically. If you stretch, if I take my original graph and stretch it vertically, look. Here's my, here's my parabola. If I take it and I stretch it vertically, I'm making it skinnier. I'm stretching it vertically. It becomes skinnier. Stretch vertically means Shrunk. Means. Fat. Shrunk vertically. So this green guy is shrunk vertically. Oh sorry. 
Not the green guy. We don't have, we did not shrink it. If you shrunk vertically, you see, even I'm confused for a second here. Stretch vertically means to get skinnier. That's right. If you stretch it, if you pick it up, and if you stretch it vertically towards the y axis, you become skinnier. Shrunk vertically. Ah, why did it say shrunk? Because their point of reference is the x axis, and if you were to take it and bring it towards the x axis, as far as they're concerned, you're shrinking the distance between the graph and the x axis. The distance between the blue graph and the x axis is very much here. You see right here for this point here is very far away from the x axis. This new graph is closer. So you're shrinking it towards the x axis. Shrinking it towards the x axis is the same way of saying, is the same thing, same thing as saying that you're stretching it away from the y axis. I'm going to say it one more time. If I have my parabola, picture in your mind a parabola, and if I shrink it towards the x-axis, shrinking, shrinking it towards the x-axis is just another way of saying that you're bringing it towards the x-axis. If I'm shrinking towards the x-axis, I am taking it, pulling it away from the y-axis. And if you're pulling it away from the y-axis, you're getting fatter. That's all. That's it. That's all there was. That's all I have to say. Finally we arrived. This geometry thing was really taking a lot of time. We spent a lot of time on it. Day number 47, we spent 17 days on it. We started with day number 31. I had 30 videos originally posted a long time ago uh, on the elementary concept of geometry that I put together. And then I started leveling them from 31, geometry for, geometry for GRE. And today we are at day 47, which means we made 17 videos on this concept of geometries. And all starting with just a few pages away, not that far. We have not come too far. It all started. It, it's all started on, on the very bottom of page 233. If you turn to page 233, topic 2.8 where it says coordinate geometry, that's where the journey began. And from there, to, uh, to arrive at from 233 to 243, it took us 17 days. Because there's a lot of stuff there that we need to understand, we need to, we need to learn. Things that we don't deal with in our daily lives. So if you have not come across in some years, it's probably not fresh in your mind from the school years, which is why I took the time. I will see you tomorrow where we will start this algebra exercises that you see there on page 243 and they are going to go very fast because they are very simple. I will see you then, okay? I know.